Hello and welcome to another video in my ever-expanding series of RP2040 microcontroller overviews. Today we're looking at an interesting board in the Adafruit RP2040 lineup and this is the Adafruit QTPi RP2040. It's an interesting name for the board but it seems uh, pretty feature-packed for such a small device. This board costs $9.95 from Adafruit's own website and then shipping to the UK uh, would probably be about another $10-$15 on top of that. But you can get it uh, for £9 here in the UK from Pi Moroni and shipping uh, is approximately £3-£4 via Royal Mail. This, uh, this cost is a little bit more than, the, than Pi Moroni's own RP2040 board which is called the Tiny2040 which I've covered in previous video, um, which is now linked in the cards above. I'll be comparing the Cutie Pie RP2040 to the Tiny2040 quite a lot throughout this video because they're very, uh, they are very similar boards. So, when my, uh, I bought my board from Adafruit's website and it arrived with some pin headers included, which is always a nice touch. Firstly, let's have a look at the size of the boards. As you can see, the Cutie Pie RP2040 comes in a little bit shorter than the Tiny2040 in terms of dimensions. To be specific, that's 21.8mm by 17.8mm uh, against the Tiny2040's 22.9 by 18.2mm. They're practically the same size and comparable to a postage stamp form factor. It weighs in at 2.2 grams. Uh, so it's perfect for wearable projects such as like a, a wearable watch or fitness tracker for example. It is also the same form factor and pin layout as the Seedwino Xiao, I think I'm saying that correctly, I'm not sure, could have butchered it, but anyway the one that's on the screen now. The Cutie Pie RP2040 has fewer pins than the Tiny2040 which contributes to its slightly smaller length. As you can see it has one less pin on the length of the board and no serial wire debug connectors. The, the, the missing serial wire debug connectors might be uh, annoying if you uh, tend to debug your uh, project using the Pico probe like I've shown in a previous video for example. Uh, the lack of that on this board might mean that you have to use a, um, a different technique to debug the, the RP2040 chip. So for example, you might have to use the second core as a debug core, um, in which case you then can't use it for something else. There might be a way around that, uh, and I'll look into that. All of the pins are castellated, meaning that there's almost like a half pin on the side, which means you can solder it to a PCB if you fancied that. However, there are components mounted on the back of the board, so that you'd have to um, which means you'd have to cut out uh, the PCB below it uh, along the sort of in like a square to allow the um, the Cutie Pie RP2040 board to sit flush with the with the PCB you were mounting it on uh, and then to solder down the sides. Uh, so I think yes it's possible to to fit this castellate into a compact PCB but it'll just take a little bit of extra uh, PCB design knowledge and, and forethought and planning to uh, integrate this permanently into a design. So that's enough comparisons now to the Tiny2040. Uh, most of the specifications are the same and I'll go through them now. So to start with it has a USB-C connector which is very nice to see and it will be helpful if you're incorporating this into small projects like wearables as a reversible uh, connector can make it a bit easier to access uh, and a bit more useful and user friendly. It has two push buttons like most RP2040 boards, it has a boot button and a reset button. Although I've noticed that they are, they're tiny buttons, maybe I just have massive fingers, but I struggle to press the reset button as it's located so close to the stemmer connector. Um, the Tiny2040 has massive push buttons in comparison. I mean, this isn't really a deal breaker, it's just something that annoyed me straight away. Uh, also on the top of the board, it has an RGB LED which is a WS2812B NeoPixel. It also has a fairly powerful voltage regulator capable of providing 600 milliamps of power to the onboard electronics, 
but also peripherals that you would connect through the board, so through the 3.3 volts or 5 volts, oh sorry, only the 3.3 volts pin. The 5 volts pin on the board uh, comes straight from the USB. It also has a Stemma QT connector for connecting uh, compatible I2C devices from Adafruit, uh, Grove, and Quick as well, I think, and maybe some other manufacturers. Um, it's actually just a 4-pin JST connector, so you can crimp your own connectors uh, to the right, or crimp your own wires, I suppose, to the right connector um, and, and use this for your, own, for your own sort of projects. It might be useful when incorporating it into a smaller device. Turning the board over, it has an 8 megabytes flash chip, which is the same as the Tiny2040 and about half of what the RP2040 can support. I suppose they've done this to save uh, size um, and, uh, and cost. There's also the RP2040 chip on the back, and in case you're unfamiliar, I'm going to run through some of the specs of that chip now. So the RP2040 chip features a dual ARM Cortex M0 uh, plus core, or cores, that can run up to 133 MHz uh, standard, but there are, it is possible to overclock uh, these cores, and, and quite well actually. It has 264 kilobytes of SRAM, four analog inputs, uh, two UARTs, two SPI and two I2C controllers, 16 PWM channels, eight PIO state machines, and USB 1.1 uh, host and device support. So it's a very well-rounded chip uh, and has become very popular recently. If we look at the pinout of the device, we of course have that Stemma QT connector that I mentioned earlier, which provides I2C um, connections for compatible devices. In terms of power pins, it's got a five volt pin that draws power from the USB port. You can use this as a voltage input, so you can drive the board from this device, uh, but Adafruit recommends that you have some sort of diode um, between the external power source and this, um, this pin. Uh, there's more details about this on their website, so if you are considering powering your device through this pin, do look into that. Uh, it tells you instructions of what to do and how to protect the device. It's got a 3.3 volts pin, uh, which is the output from the onboard regulator, or Adafruit state, that you can draw up to 500 milliamps from this connector. And it's also got a ground pin. There are four analog capable pins labeled A0 to A3. And these pins are also capable of acting as digital inputs for SPI uh, and I2C, as well as PWM. The rest of the pins are digital pins, which can be used for the various um, communication channels such as uh, SPI, I2C and UART. It should also be noted that the boot select button can also be used as an input, as a user input, after the the device has been plugged in. So when it's not being used as a boot select button, you can actually use it in your code. In terms of programming this board, you can program it like the Pico or any other RP2040 board uh, for that matter in C or C++. Um, and I've set up the tool chain in the video in the cards above, but you can also use MicroPython and CircuitPython, which is, which is Adafruit's take on my, MicroPython. I personally only program in C at the moment, and so I'll demonstrate how you can use this board now. I'm going to upload a sketch to mess around with a NeoPixel on top of the board using the PIO state machines on the RP2040. This is a slightly modified example from the Pico examples library provided by the Raspberry Pi uh, Foundation. Before we get into the code, just have a quick look at the um, QtPi RP2040 schematic, and we can see that the NeoPixel um, data line is connected to GPIO pin 12, but there's also a power pin that we need to consider. So normally a NeoPixel will just be connected to the 3 volts line of a, a power rail of, the, of a board, but in this case Adafruit have tied it to a GPIO pin, and I think this has been done so that you can turn it off completely, as in you don't have to have any power going to the board, uh, to the NeoPixel. Um, but it just means we've got to enable it when we uh, enable this pin, which is pin 11, when we want to use it in our code. So I've just added the lines to the example code um, that are highlighted in red now, 
the simply set pin 11 as an output and set it high at the start of the uh, start of the program running and also the pin number that uh, corresponds to the data line has been edited to GPIO pin 12. The program is then built and uploaded as usual. You plug in the, uh, the QtPi RP2040 by pressing and holding the boot select button and plugging the device in. Once the mass storage device opens, simply drag and drop your UF2 file from the build folder into the uh, QtPi RP2040's sort of emulated mass storage device. Once finished, it will reboot, and as you can see, the NeoPixel is flashing how, it sh how we expect. So that was a super quick overview of the Adafruit QtPi RP2040 board. I personally really like the board. I think it's very cool how much they can fit onto such a small device. Um, but it is very similar to the Pi Moroni's Tiny2040. I'm somewhat disappointed that there is no serial wire debug um, pins on this device um, because I like to program and debug my um, RP2040 boards or devices using a Pico probe. Um, there might be another way around that. Uh, I'm going to look into that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all I've got to cover for today. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about the board. Or let me know if any of these um, will make their way into one of your projects. So thank you for listening uh, and watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And have a nice day.